Alright, so what's up with Facebook now? Mark Zuckerberg is testifying in front of Congress. Smart move, when you stand next to those people you almost seem likable and trustworthy. The exodus from Facebook continues as their stock declines to the point where I might have to start recommending their investors buy Puerto Rican bonds. Quick question everyone, when you read a story about share quoting Facebook, do you share? Alright, so let's get serious because this is the big show in the media right now. First off, why is he testifying before Congress? Well, it's really because he tried apologizing on Facebook to which people responded, too long didn't read. So now he has to go to Congress to get peppered with questions by people who probably still use Netscape and Hotmail. Is he going to behave like an adult as, as a major corporate leader or give me this phony baloney, what, what is it, hoodies and dungarees and what is that kind of thing? Hoodies and dungarees? Yeah, this is going to be the guy to crack the code of the intricacies of your privacy settings. I'd ask if he wants to has a cheeseburger, but I think that joke might be too hip for him. Well, the stated reason he's testifying before Congress is to answer questions on Cambridge Analytica and Russia. Two things that a quick Google search or watching this episode could reveal infinitely more about than his testimony. But don't worry because one of the congressmen will be able to pat himself on the back extra hard when he gets Zuckerberg to say, It's clear now that we didn't do enough. We didn't focus enough on preventing abuse and thinking through how people could use these tools to do harm as well. Although the alternative is him saying, yeah, we gave it our best shot, you know? Guess we can't protect your data. Still, you should keep an account with us. That said, in an unprecedented terrifying data breach, according to the New York Times, Cambridge Analytica gained access not only to our names, but also our birth dates and the places and pages we liked, which are all things I wanted to keep private by posting them publicly on my profile. In a genuinely shocking twist though, I found some of the above board non-scandal areas to be more alarming, revealing that if you'd taken their Facebook quiz, Facebook gave them access to your private messages for academic purposes. Turns out that the research process to find out which sex in the city character you were might have been a little more extensive than you thought. This is not part of the scandal though because it was consistent with Facebook's privacy policy and used exclusively for academic research purposes, and not exactly turned over to Cambridge Analytica. In fact, it seems strange how low key these legitimate academic research papers go. From a Carnegie Mellon study that tracked 3.9 million users statuses, comments and posts that they wrote and then deleted before posting, regardless of their privacy settings. Or of course the Cornell University experiment where they tracked whether getting your profile to auto share deals you had taken advantage of had a significant effect on sales amongst your friends. Versus of course letting you just voluntarily choose whether you wanted to share items. Hopefully you weren't buying birth control because now everyone knows what a great deal you just got without your control. That said, that's not what this scandal is about at all. It's about the fact that a company that was only supposed to get the likes, dislikes, names, and ages of people who took their quiz instead were able to access the likes, dislikes, names, and ages of their friends as well in order to target click ads. Which is bad, but my god how did it turn into all this? So this brings us to the important part of this episode. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, it turns out that the best method for protecting your privacy might not be leaving it up to the company whose entire business plan revolves around selling that information. Now, don't get me wrong, there are laws about this and Mark Zuckerberg has broken them. The only problem is that they're European laws. So what steps is America taking to regulate them? Well, first we have an FTC lawsuit alleging that Facebook isn't getting proper consent from users before monetizing their data. Now, this is no small suit as on the books punishments for this is $40,000 per user per day. So if it's that alleged 87 million people and this data harvesting has been going on for let's say a month and a 31 day month, not one of those fake 28 day Februarys, well, your bill is going to be about $100 trillion and growing at $3.5 trillion a day. Although I'm sure the government would be willing to negotiate that down a little bit. In this case, the FTC commissioner Bill Kovacic was noted as saying, 
Now, would the FTC say, here's a bill for one trillion dollars? No, but short of that, could they impose a breathtaking civil penalty, Kovacic said? Just a trillion? Man, you're already giving up more than 99% of what you could be asking for. At this time, the investigation is in public though, so any further reporting would be speculation. Now, this next piece of regulation is legislation, specifically the Honest Ads Act, which, talk about an oxymoron. The idea behind this legislation is not so much about privacy as it is about political ads, and requires that any ad with political lean must identify the entity that is buying them. Should make for some interesting flame wars when everyone finally realizes that Russia is funding all sides of the debate. Now, I got all these ads from the Washington Post article about this, and they range from this one targeted towards Sanders supporters, to this one targeted towards people living in Ferguson, and this one targeted to New Yorkers with sympathy to Black Lives Matters in order to get them to protest Trump, although that protest was set to collide with an anti-Hillary Clinton event that they also organized that would have caused all sorts of fun newsroom footage of people freaking out about how divided our country is. Now, just imagine how much less impact those ads would have if you knew that Vladimir Putin was buying them. Hey guys, Vladimir Putin's putting on a Trump is not my president march in the park. We should really go. Now this act has stalled in the Senate because of course it has. But the Senate Rules Committee Chair Richard Shelby who is keeping this act down is expected to be replaced by Senator Roy Blunt. Although. Richard Shelby, you seem oddly keen on not revealing who's paying for your ads. You getting a few pennies from Putin on the side? So let's get back to your data because that's what people are most worried about. Obama two times tried to pass a consumer privacy bill of rights, similar to the California Consumer Privacy Act. That would the consumers have the right to decide what personal data companies collect from them and, and how companies use that, in, that data, that information. The right to know that your personal information collected for one purpose can't then be misused by a company for a different purpose. The right to have your information stored securely by companies that are accountable for its use. This didn't end up getting approved though, because frankly, it would have made marketing a pain. And if you don't have the marketing people on your side, well, then you're probably not gonna succeed. More recently though, we saw Trump also deal with privacy in 2017 when, they say the Congress isn't doing much, but Republicans have just passed and President Trump is expected to sign a bill that repeals recently crafted regulations that barred internet service providers from selling their clients browser history to other companies. Yes, the Donald repealed FCC rules about people's privacy, specifically our internet history, which is why I can't let anyone borrow my computer. Steven, why do you keep getting ads for someone stole my computer for a few months, all right? Alright, so I'm actually trying to say something with all this. This Facebook thing is just the tip of the iceberg of what people are learning about you online. In fact, as I type this into Google Docs, I'd be surprised if some algorithm wasn't taking note of this. But why? Why oh why does Coca-Cola give a crap that you join the official My Little Pony page when even your friends don't? Well, because next time you get on Facebook, you're probably gonna see this ad. And if we've learned anything, probably 10 ads from Russia about, well, whatever this is. Oh my god, it's like I took drugs before reading The Economist. Also, I must really not understand the politics of your run-of-the-mill brony. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe by clicking on my eagle, or do it the old fashioned way by clicking the subscribe button below. And remember to give me a thumbs up.